This is a photograph of Lee Harvey Oswald. It shows him carrying a gun, holstering a pistol, and you can't see what's on the newspaper, but he's holding these Marxist or communist newspapers. And the photograph was very damning. First of all, it showed that he had weapons, and it also sort of was further evidence of his communist sympathies at the time. And um, if this photograph is fake, it would almost certainly point to a broader conspiracy, because it means the police doctored a photograph to try to spin a story. And the thing that has people really bothered about this photograph primarily is the lighting and the shadows. So if you look at his, the, the cast shadow by his body, you see it going back and to his right, which would suggest that the, le that the light is sort of relatively low, because it's a long shadow, and off to his left. That would sort of give rise to that. Now what I'm showing you here is a magnified view of his face, and you see this very long shadow being cast by his nose. And that would suggest that the light is above him. And I have to say, when I first looked at this, I, it seemed weird to me. I'm like, well, how did that happen? So I thought, wow, I wonder if this is really a fake image. Now, at the same time, we had been doing a study to try to understand the limitations of the visual system in reasoning about shadows and lighting and 3D geometry. And it turns out we are spectacularly bad at it. I mean, really, it's unbelievable how bad we are. So I was able to temper my suspicions a little bit with an understanding that my brain just isn't very good at this. So I wanted to really not just do a qualitative study. I really wanted to sort of get at this in a very quantitative and mathematical way. And fortunately, there's just now enough technology that we were able to go back and look at this photograph from 1963 to try to answer this question. If we're interested in reasoning about shadows, the first thing we have to realize is that everything here is happening in a three-dimensional world. We're looking at a two-dimensional image, but everything here happened in the world. And if we want to recreate this, we need 3D models of everything so we can figure out, well, if I put the light here, the camera here, the person here, where does all the light come? So we have to build 3D models. So the first challenge is his head. Okay. So this is on the top, a mugshot of Oswald, um, so profile and frontal view. And what I'm showing you here are the corresponding views of my 3D model. So we now have a 3D model. The most important thing, of course, here is not every little tiny detail, but it's the size of his nose, because that's eventually what is going to cause the shadow that we care about. So you can see that the, si the shape of the nose is about right. Okay. So now we need a 3D model of the body and maybe a little bit of the scene around him. More or less, we now know where Oswald was standing relative to the camera, and more importantly, where was the light? Because we now know where the light would have to be to cast that shadow. So now the interesting question is, what does his face look like? Because if this is actually a composite, then the shadows on the face will be inconsistent. So here's the original, and here's the model from the previous scene. And there's all kinds of interesting things here. So first of all, look at the inside the wells of the eyes, you see the same type of darkness. Um, under the, the lower lip, you see the, the darkness from the shadow. Um, of course, the nose is almost perfect. It's a very long shadow, which is really surprising, by the way. And my favorite part, which is on the neck, you see the shadow cutting in like exactly like you have here. So everything in this photograph is exactly consistent. So you can build a quantitative three-dimensional model of the scene, of the person, of the head, figure out where the camera or the light was, reconstruct, and everything is perfect. So if this was a fake, it would have been almost unimaginable how they could have done this in 1963. Because the lighting and the shadows from the person, from the, 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 the beam, would have been exactly right, which even today would have been extremely hard to do. So it's almost certainly the case that the reason why people think this is a fake is simply a failing of the visual system to reason about 3D lighting and 3D geometry. Because in fact, when you do the reconstruction, everything is 100% perfect. I, you know, you tend to think about digital forensics as this modern-day tool answering modern-day problems. But the reality is, because photo manipulation does have a long history, we now have sufficiently powerful tools where we can now start going back through history and trying to answer some really interesting, long-standing mysteries throughout history. And that's sort of an exciting new avenue to use these modern-day tools to go back, you know, through, through the decades to try to understand certain things. I think if you're going to make claims that something is fake, you, you can't just say something looks wrong. I mean, that's sort of the whole point, is that you've got to bring more rational reasoning to these types of things. And I think that's what these forensics tools can do.